Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! Mr. Fluffabottom, to me. Let's see our new home. Well, Sir Fluffabottom, that was a lot easier than I expected. I mean, did you see how Adrian and Chris just fell right through that? <laughs> but now we have to get down to business. How am I gonna convince these users? We gotta convince them that we're all on the same side. We're all doing the right thing together. I mean, it is for their own good. <laughs> but how? <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Ah, perfect. <clears throat> perfect. Adrian! Yeah, yeah. Adrian, that worked. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm as impressed as you are, man. Yeah, I honestly, I, I wasn't sure, but... Uh, hey, By yeah, the way, this was hey. the second transformation effect that we did, and coincidentally, the second time, it's somebody turning into me. Everybody just wants to be you, man. I guess so. <laughs> The coolest shots of Mystique transforming in the films have always had camera movement. Yep. We wanted to do this as well, but since we didn't have a motion control rig, we decided to be clever boys and <laughs> use the turntable. We've done this before for some motion controlled shots like that time I had that incident with the wand and also the bullet time effect for that frost trailer we did back in the day. So we had a pretty good feeling that it would work out this time. That's right. So we had some tape on the turntable marking where Professor Yu Unicorn's feet were and we let him do a few glorious spins and he stood as still as he possibly could. Then I stepped up to the turntable and did a few spins myself, making sure my feet were aligned with his feet markers. If you guys think you're the only people who can spin, I got news for you. Yeah, show us your spin, Adrian. Whee! After that, we placed the mic stand with some tracking markers into the actual set and we lit it the exact same way that we lit the subjects on the turntable. This will help make the compositing look super realistic-ish. Alex used the Ronin and rotated around the mic stand, keeping it as stable as he could while I made sure he didn't trip over any lights, cables, or small puppies. Aww. Despite the Ronin, the background was still a bit shaky, so we hit it with a warp stabilizer VFX effect. Kapowski! <laughs> It's been hey, mostly. I'm Kapowski. <laughs> <laughs> It was mostly left on its default setting, except we changed the method from subspace warp to position. Because that warp was looking wonky. Wonky as wonk. Both the actors, yeah, call myself an actor here. Wow, were congratulations, out, man. Thank you. Keyed out and placed into a new composition. We matched up the timing of them and animated one of them with some position and rotation keyframes to make the two clips match up as perfectly as possible. Here's what our creepy baby would look like. <laughs> The feather simulations were made in Cinema 4D R19 version. How do we make the feathers, Adrian? Uh, well, you know, the feathers themselves, they were just planes, bro, but with a taper. Oh. We did use the cloner and used hairs as the objects. Painting on hairs allowed us to get a nice distribution of the feathers and also have more control over the direction the feathers were facing. Yeah, that made a huge difference. He was all porcupine before. The effectors used were shader and random. The random effector was just for a little scale and rotation, so it didn't look too patterned. The shader controlled the rotation of the feathers. We applied noise to the shader, but it was really difficult to control and we thought that we might have to throw it out. Luckily, we came across this tutorial by Eugene over at Edge CGI. Thanks, Eugene. He showed us a cool and simple technique using basic espresso to control the shader's gradient. It's a really cool and wonderful technique, but it does take some time and we're not going to get into it. I hate when people are like, here's a tutorial and they're like, go watch this video to learn how to do this effect. I hate it too. Link yeah. in the description. The feather shaders were set to front and back with two colors, so when they rotated, the colors would change completely. We used C4D Light for the final step, which is included in After Effects. Whoa, what a deal. Yep, so if you have After Effects, you have C4D Light. With your After Effects composition open, go to File, Export, Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter, and save that. Then you can import that Cinema 4D file into your After Effects composition. Go 
ahead and open up that Cinema 4D file you just created. We just deleted all the layers that came through, but our composition and render settings will stay the same. This is super duper important. Make sure your C4D settings match your After Effects composition settings or there will be inconsistencies. <laughs> we then created a new background and a new texture. For the texture, we selected an MP4 of our footage. To make sure the preview plays back, go to the texture editor and select animate preview. We can use this to match up with our 3D head. We built the head in C4D Studio, but you can import the Olympic sequence. It's just an animated 3D sequence of the head and animation into C4D Lite. Go to file merge and find that Olympic sequence. Link in the description. We just set it to rotate with two keyframes and made it a linear interpolation. Then we added two new textures, one green and one purple, and set the purple to the back and the green to the front so when the feathers flip they reveal a different color. We removed the specular entirely and added in some lights making sure the shadows were turned on for all the lights. The head was the only real 3D effect. The feathers on the arm and body are 2D exports and that made things a lot easier. Both free and pro members can find these on footagecrate.com. Yup. We just layered a bunch of these making sure we had enough to cover the entire body. None of these are actually tracked into the scene. Obviously they probably should be but we noticed the effect looked pretty good without the tracking and we didn't bother if it ain't broke don't fix it if it ain't broke don't fix it nice good, <laughs> good contribution <Yeah. laughs> we also added an adjustment layer with a bulge effect to make more of a 3d type look for the arm we have a separate feather transition element and this one isn't tracked in either but it is animated to follow the arm giving it a separate level of depth we also had to animate some masks on some green and purple solids for cleanup the goal here is to make a transition that moves from solid green to solid purple if you look at the transition we ended up with it's ridiculous but that's okay it doesn't need to be pretty it just needs to work mm -hmm. speaking of back to you chris <laughs> Pre-comp all those transition layers and make a duplicate. On one of these layers, use a key light to remove the green and on the duplicate, key out the purple. Set your actor to use the layer with the keyed out purple as an alpha mat, and then the second one should use the one with the keyed out green as an alpha mat. Green is not a funny color. Green, yeah, you're right. <laughs> on both of the actor's layers, you can add a displacement map effect and use the transition layer to drive the displacement. If we set the displacement on the first actor to negative 100 in the vertical and the second actor to positive 100 in the vertical, the pixels on both layers will look like they are being pulled towards the transition point. This gives the effect some extra life. Make a new copy of the transition layer and on this one key out both the green and the purple. Hit the putz switch. Hey Chris, what's a putz? Putz stands for preserve underlying transparency switch. Wrong. Oh. Actually, no, that was right. I was messing with you. Ah, man, I should stay confident in my decision. <laughs> Hit the putts on this layer so it only shows up where we need it. Now we've got some shadows. You can use a tritone to add some blue to the midtones here if you like. Or purple, or green, yeah. or yellow, or blue, or no, not blue. Not blue? Okay, blue. Okay, yeah, use blue. For some extra texture, we can make another copy of this layer and add our very favorite and most commonly used effect, CC hair. Turn up the length and the thickness, but turn down the weight. We'll need to turn up the density as well, and we can color it all a dark blue. <laughs> All we need to do now is go back to our comp with the background and do a simple point track, apply that data to a null, bring in the crazy comp we just made with the actors and parent it to the null. And boom. bada bing! Bada boom! We have a mystique transformation morphing cool effect. Everybody won this effect and we did it. I'm proud. Pat yourself on the back, Adrian. Let me, let me get close to the mic. And stiff. We gotta do some stretches in the morning. <laughs> positive reinforcement. <laughs> this was a fun effect. It was challenging, but I had a good time making it. If you have ideas for effects, I guarantee you we can do it. We can do anything we set our minds to. I wasn't confident before this week, but now I am. Yeah, we can, we can do anything. Confidence. So leave a suggestion in the comments below and uh, yeah, we'll read it. Stay hydrated, make it awesome, call your mom. I agree with all the above. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Hey, Rio, do you like my jokes? Laugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>